I'd say since it's five o'clock, let's call this 25th of October meeting of the Water and Sewer District to order. And let's begin, please, with um, approval of minutes from our previous meeting, October 11. I make a motion we approve the meeting minutes from October 11. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so then on to payroll and manifest. I make Where's a motion we sign the payroll and manifest as presented. I second that. All those in favor here? Aye. 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 Okay, new business. So we've got, um, ah, yes. Do, who, who gets the authority? Yes. So this so is uh, yeah the drinking water. Um, Jason has actually groundwater trust fund already kind of submitted it. Is that correct, Jason? So yes. just we need the authorization for for him to submit Jason it. to yeah. have submitted yeah, we it. Had a, um, I need the deadline of uh, October fourteenth. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So I make and then a I need to <coughs> have okay. I make a motion that we um, allow Jason to authorize Jason. authorize Jason to submit a funding application for the drinking water and groundwater trust fund um, application. Application. Right. Thing. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So yeah, this means money coming to us. Yes. Yeah, if so we accept it. it. If yeah. we accept it. Right. Yeah. So if you recall, we had a. Um, portion of Reservoir Road that didn't get funded through the state's SRF and ARPA program, or it did get ARPA but didn't get SRF loan. So we are asking the trust fund for an additional 134000 in grant and 536000 in loan, which would put Reservoir Could Water Could you flip those numbers? About, yeah. <laughs> about 60% 60, 60, uh, grant. Okay. All right. But that's... Yep. This, along with uh, with the other ones, will all be on our November 9th work session. Yes. Okay. We'll have the bids in by then, and so we'll... That's the one we're starting early, right? Yeah, four. We'll hang up right 4 p.m. Yes. It's a Wednesday, the day yeah. after election day. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, any other new business in front of us? Um, I need to at least sign this. Previous. I guess that's a no, so then we're on to old business. So, so yeah, CCS CCS stuff. yeah, so we've right, we've got the um, the eye chart here. So I yeah. still I, I really <laughs> wish that she didn't just put X's in things because I don't know what those X's mean. Um so does that say that the server was? I believe that's put that in was prior the, to 2018. I, I, I believe that was the date when it was supposed to, the scheduled time year for replacement. So mm -hmm. that means that we've already um, the server was replaced. And it's pending network restructure in 2023. Correct. Yes. So it will right, be right. replaced again. So that's a five-year cycle. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. That, then I get it. Yeah. I mean, Element Server is 2024, but I could have sworn she said that if we restructure things and change things, those could be combined yes, into correct. one server. Yes, that's correct. Right, so it'd be a virtual, so, virtualized. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. So as far as all of the other hardware... I, well, now I understand what the right, other so are. Right, you so know, we've, we're about to tackle the last uh, two items there where we have tackled... Hard to read. Mm -hmm. Right, so the office manager desktop, and then the one um, Water workstation up. in in the at the plant. Mm -hmm. So, have we tackled the one at the plant yet, or are we about to? Yep, they that one it. has been replaced. Right. Okay. Okay. last week. Okay. Yeah. Oh, last week. Okay. I know we had discussed it before. Yeah. And it's working better, I'm assuming. Yes. Yep. Okay. Hard not to. And then, <laughs> uh, right? And then, um, Heidi's surface. We purchased it from CCS. Okay. But we own it. It's, okay. It's not one of the leased ones from CCS. Okay. It was added on after she started that contract. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 We, we. We. But they. 
worked through that at some point. Right, but they maintain it for us. They do. She, okay. They added right. the contract to maintain it. Yes. Right. Okay. And so Dawn's computer was gone. Yes. And then we're still trying to figure out what to do with the finance computer, or are we removing that? We, if we go forward with the the new um, servers, servers and everything, it, then, then that's that going. gets eliminated. Okay, right. So right. there's because no reason to go ahead and do it right now until it's decided how that. Right. Okay. So, right. Then Heidi, Heidi at that point would connect to the so server. Right. To with the right. Yeah. Surface. Okay. Yeah. That works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the game plan, so subject to those of you who speak technology more than I do, is to. Retain David Savage as a virtual CIO yes. on an hourly basis. Uh, we're meeting, we're scheduled to meet with him the week after next to discuss the grant application. And once we've kind of got the application sorted out, then come back to you all and say, look, this is what we're proposing, assuming he gets funded, this is what we're proposing to acquire, and then have a conversation around do we lease through CCS? Do we really do we lease directly? My inclination is to allow the CCS contract to expire in 2024 and then be in a position to make a determination mm -hmm. then what do we want to do? Yeah. I'm not sure that there's any economic advantage to us leasing through them because uh, it's the markup and we can lease through Dell or through others directly. Right. Yeah. Right. And so the only issue would be then determining whether or not those things can and will be maintained by CCS, assuming you want them mm -hmm. maintained. And if so, is there? Is are, are we there talking? Are we talking post twenty twenty four? Is that post twenty twenty four? Well, it depends on it depends on what we wind up acquiring through the grant. Oh, right, 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 right. So, yes. Yeah, so there's some big, the, the big decision here is, right, do, do we acquire this new server through the, with grant money yep. um, in some fashion, leased or purchased, or do we, do we continue the... Yeah, well, and, and there's with CCS. kind of two parts to that equation. One part is, can the, how, how does the grant money work? And so, you, you know, if they give us 100000 it's it's a $100,000 grant, you know, can we take the $100,000 and then parse it out over a five-year lease period? Right, right, so to or, apply towards leasing of, yeah, of or servers, do we have to, yes. Do we, or, you know, do we have to take the money and expend it? Right, is there a date and, by which it has yeah. to be expended? And, it, and, and do we care? I mean, does it, if, if the money's coming through a grant, is there any advantage to leasing? Right, well, I'd be, I, I'd like to sit in on that. I'd like to be a part of that meeting with David. Um, uh, yeah, we definitely need to articulate the cost of yep. these various options. I'm sure mm -hmm. we all want to hear mm -hmm. the, what well, those are. Acquisition, and maintenance, and replacement. Mm -hmm. Total right. Total cost here of over time. Sounds good to me. I think that's we're on track to doing the right thing in that regard. So is this is this is a bit sparse? Is this? Well, I guess it helps clarify the status of all all of the hardware. So, I mean, it brings to the forefront that you know we we outright own a couple of firewalls. We own the router and switch a, a switch or two and a, and some printers. So we know that if those fail, then they're on us. You know, they're it's on us to replace them. Right. Yeah. Right. So I mean, I guess. We ought to be mindful of what the cost of those are, and you know, so we have enough budgeted for replacement. I mean, the big ones are potentially the firewalls. I don't recall exactly. Yeah, all of this will be factored into the preparation of the grant right. application in terms right. of what what do we need to kind of sustain that which we have, and then what will we need going forward to advance the targets of the, of the grant, the purpose of the grant. Yeah, I guess it makes sense that we have a good handle on what our capital, what the true annual yeah, capital, yeah, cost capital cost is, cost is, at least at some point in time. I mean, obviously it's going to change, but 
um, yeah, we kind of need to know for the planning. Well, you, the district once had a technology capital reserve fund that went away. Right. I'm not sure why. I don't know if you recall that we found the history of a number that started and either didn't get funded or seemed to lapse. But at some point, it makes sense to have something like that so we don't wind up in a situation where you know, we've got thousands of dollars worth of technology that all have to be replaced at once without any cash in the bank. Right, the right, yeah. So all of this is, I mean, this is, um, this is asset management like anything else. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, well, I wonder if that was really discontinued because we had a contract with CCS. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not I bet recalling. if we yeah. go back that's probably when it got discontinued. But who knows? I'd have to dig out the hmm. exercise that Heidi and I Kim went through. Going back, we went back to 2000 and carried forward votes on capital reserves. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was one that was created, but it didn't go anywhere. One, one of the things that I have um, that I regret and comment on this uh, proposal or not proposal from uh, inventory from CCS is it doesn't really lay out who's responsible for maintaining the equipment even though we own some of the equipment what is their what is the responsibility under CCS's contract of services no, that's true to maintain some of this stuff because they have gone into routers and reconfigured things and you know, are they looking at that stuff? Uh, the firewalls, for instance. You know, I would assume they would be the ones going she, in and. She does note under the firewall, basic maintenance and repair included in contract. Okay. All right. Yeah, but I guess that I seem to recall there was something about. Um, was it the firewalls that had we have an annual contract with the, with the manufacturer for. At, for updates, perhaps? I, I'm not recalling. I'm not positive on that. Yeah. Sure. But it must yeah. be the maintenance she's talking about. Yeah, right? perhaps. Anyway. Um, well, I mean, this is somewhat helpful, um, I think, to just visually have a sense for what we have and what we need to be putting number, keeping numbers on. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that one of the one of the services that we'll get from David in this virtual CIO role is answers to, to those kinds of things. I mean, he's, it's, it's the way he thinks. And so we, you know, if we get an hour a month or two hours a month from him, begin building towards having a kind of a technology plan, for lack of a better description, in place, answering those questions. So, you know, the first issue is to kind of get us together internally and then to introduce him to CCS in terms of him being a representative of us, kind of a staff voice for us, and then kind of filling in the blanks in mm -hmm. terms of what what do we need. And in my mind, clearly, the, the grant provides the context for that conversation in terms of Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're pursuing $100,000 for technology upgrades, improvements, which includes the direction. What, you know, what technology direction are we going in? What's the front end cost? What's the annual cost? What's the replacement cost? All of which takes somebody who's steeped in that kind of a conversation. Right, right. For that kind of technology. Yeah. So step one, I mean, we got this from her. Step one will be the week after next meeting with him to kind of nail down for, or, and to start the conversation about the grant application process. Um, you know, what, what do we think, where do we think we want to be? What are the pros and cons of that? What equipment, what software, uh, you know, what, what best meets our needs? And then at least providing me with an opportunity to kind of quiz around the, the ongoing costs associated with that. We can buy $100,000 worth of equipment if we afford to maintain it and replace it. This is kind of an ongoing secondary question. Huh. 
Well, it's really not that much different than all of our piping in the ground. Mm -hmm. we're well, <laughs> except, except we have very little piping that lasts only five years. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> thank, thankful for that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, all right, let's on to maybe some more positive things. Uh, any other old business floating around? Flowing around. Mm -hmm. um, administration items. Right Pierce project closeout. This is all related to PS1. PS1, et cetera. So I've, I've been having conversations with Mike Terrio uh, and Tim Badney with regard to essentially four areas, or five areas really, of concern. The cost of construction oversight, supervision, inspection on that whole project. Um, and it went over substantially. You'll see they addressed it uh, in the end. Um, I, I understand what they're saying. That the, I, I told them that because that's their position doesn't mean that we buy into that. And that my intention is that before we execute the contract, for the next round of construction, we will sit at the table and have a conversation and that will be part of that conversation. Mm -hmm. The other issues are the basket across the way, and it, the, the functionality of the basket, the problems with challenges and issues, um, the problems with puddling and, and paving at the plant, the grit pad, and the problem with the scale access. Right, right. And All so on, on each of those things, they have agreed to, um, uh, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not sure on the grip plan. Yeah, they will. Yeah, all the engineering is covered engineering, for all of all those things. All the engineering things. will be done at no cost. And on the paving and on the basket, once we solicit cost to solve the problem, there will then be a discussion with regard to their participation in sharing in the cost of the fixes. Yeah, there's no time. That's the, the basket strainer. There's no timeline there, unlike the other right. sections. How, how are you, Jason, how are you managing with this in, our interim solution over there? Uh, the, some of the modifications we made made are definitely helping out. Um, we factored it last week and did see a reduction in rags in the wet well. Uh, so it has been doing okay for us. The biggest thing again is the um, uh, travel up and down right. the rails, uh, the current rail system. Uh, so that's one of the, the shortfalls still right now. Uh, we're, since we're not operating the second basket, we have dedicated the hoist directly onto this this one basket, so um, you know, that's taken care of the issue of the hoist in the interim, um, but it would be nice to be able to operate both sides simultaneously because that was the intent of their right Pierce's design. Right, right. Remind me how much a, a vectoring event costs? Uh, it's about, um, I believe it's close to $200 an hour. Right. So, um, Anywhere between two and four hours on the back to that station. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Now that I mean, got to think about that. We're we're paying the bill every every month here, so obviously that'd be nice if if right, right here's. But I, I spoke moved. with him on Friday, and, and he he his explanation was that Jason and Mike are working on the solution. I haven't had a chance to follow up. Yeah, but I'm yeah. It's, it's understandable how the other points, you know, are, are rolling into to, ne to next year. But this one, I think, yeah, it needs to be done sooner rather than right. 2023. It just costs us money every time we have right. to do it. Right. Right. So that's my only concern there. Wow. Judy had a few. Yeah, you, I you, just don't understand this last bullet additional construction administration efforts are they saying that what are I don't understand what they're saying they're, they're saying that they they did a, a good job and they could have been more expensive if they weren't as efficient as they are 
Um, I, so that's just a pat on their own back? Um, well, it's kind of laying the groundwork fra for the framing next conversation. The, yeah, yes, okay. Right. Framing they're the, framing the next yeah. okay. conversation. Got it. Because I'm like, they, what they, does they this have anything to do with the rest of what they were saying in here? Right. Okay. As long as I'm... Yeah. I mean, okay. we, our I our position it. has been they were substantially over budget. Right. Their position is it's understandable because of right. the delays that took okay. place, et cetera, et cetera. Got it. Okay. Oh, yes. Um, so that is administration items. Uh, if there's nothing else there, then Kim? I don't have anything tonight. Okay. Jason? I uh, just want to give everyone an update that all of our staff uh, that had COVID have returned to work um, as of today. Uh, so we are moving forward. Hopefully uh, uh, no one has else has gotten sick um, since that time, but um, over the last week and a, week and a half, we had a, a five staff total that Jeez. were out. Yeah, I'm sure that was difficult to manage uh, yeah. day to day there, everything getting, mm. yeah. So um, with that, last week we did uh, tackle vectoring, uh, fall vectoring, so we vectored part of the collection system, a few of the pump stations, and the uh, tanks at the treatment plant, so that is taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, we completed uh, paving repairs on Chase Street from a break there earlier this year, and on Parker Street there was uh, some uh, gate, gate valve boxes that needed to be raised, and we did some paving there. Uh, that was completed this week. Right. I was surprised at the cost of the, the by Chase Street Market. There, four thousand. It wasn't that big a, an area. No, but yeah, pave, the paving is expensive. Yeah. Wow. Like I said, a lot of the times the paving is the most expensive piece of the break. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, you all, your team did all the dirt work, but, um, right. and replaced the pipe, but wow. Yeah, that's. We did um, uh, receive a sanitary survey from DES uh, just today, the same. Yeah, afternoon. it came to yeah. everybody's email. Yep. Oh, yep. So I uh, quickly browsed through that, and uh, everything is pretty good except for the manganese piece, which we know about. Um, uh, but they did uh, give us a date essentially for that. Uh, third quarter 2023 will be our first required testing. Um, so once we get that result back, <laughs> there will likely be a notification um, to the public. So we'll plan uh, the first half of next year to prepare for that um, in anticipation. We're still moving forward on the Holderness Wells. We're at 60% design now on those and we're going to be doing some geotechnical work tomorrow some test pits under the highway on the Plymouth side and a, and a boring to accommodate the rerouting of the pipe underneath the river and underneath the highway uh, so that'll be part of some of tomorrow's work uh, today we met with uh, Ty Sales uh, who provides and our meters. meter stuff um, and we, we had a demo of their new Neptune 360 uh, program. <laughs> the new radio reads. Yeah. And we, uh, Kim and I, I didn't believe in Gary, we're all impressed, Very with, impressed. with the program um, and looking to get a new device for meter reading, uh, the, particularly the radio read meters, which will uh, cut staff time. Uh, right now we currently uh, spend about two days with two staff to read our entire system. Uh, with the new automated meter reading equipment, uh, they'd be potentially able to read a, the entire system within two hours. Oh, oh. that's pretty <laughs> impressive. So that, Holy that would cow. Also, that's incredible. <laughs> that would also Jesus. enhance our leak detection capabilities for folks. Right, because um, you can get... So we can read more frequently if needed. Um, and yep. be able to pick up on that stuff. Yep. So uh, that's part of the asset management grant that we're working on and will likely uh, proceed with that. that so is that in. just a software upgrade? Uh, it's cloud-based. Yeah, it's cloud-based. Part cloud software, based. Okay. Part, software yeah. part actual devices. Is, okay. Yeah. 
So but the meters that are currently in buildings that are radio reads don't need to be replaced. No, we no. estimate yeah. we have about 100 manual meters, but we could still read them with our handheld until those get upgraded. Okay, Yeah. nice. And they'll give us a lot of um, uh, information too to, to analyze. Uh, we can separate groups of users from our high system and our low system figure out exactly makes where it all sorts of pretty. usage is coming right. from or, or yeah. links. So yeah. It gives you your top of, 10. Like yeah. There's a graph that will give you your top yeah. 10 for each one, and it will tell um, you, it will alert you if one of your okay. top 10 falls off that maybe something changed. Yeah. Did, ta did they give us any indication about meter supply? They did say that uh, things are improving a little okay. bit, but they're still, uh, if you order them today, they probably won't be here till like next August. September. But we have uh, hopefully we, we have ordered a, a few. Stock, right? Yes, we, we have a, a stock that should get us through the 100 meter replacements. We're also putting some aside from Main Street, um, but we will need to order yeah, some. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. we should order these. Yep. Okay. And that's, that's all I have. Okay. First strikes? Oh, I, I, had, I had a couple questions on the purchase orders since sure. while you're at the helm. So, the manhole magnets was are, this is pretty much a, an, an annual thing now, right? It's, yeah, yeah. So, they they wear tend to wear out within a year. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it has been a year since we did this last time. Mm -hmm. this time. Um, the the generator, the the power up generator service. What I'm, what that was a switch maybe? I'm getting. Uh, was that the 4,000? 4, yeah, 4,400. Yep. So that was the, uh, that's going to be for the automatic transfer switch of the treatment plant. Um, so that we had uh, failed us and we installed a temporary manual switch, like a breaker box essentially. Um, we had another vendor come in, uh, Gemini, and indicate that some of the parts inside of the existing unit can be replaced, whereas another vendor we had used said they were obsolete um, so we'll be replacing those parts and rebuilding the existing transfer switch um, at a much lower cost than it would be to replace the entire thing that oh. we had anticipated it was capital reserve yeah, yeah weren't we going to pull like ten thousand from capital reserve right yeah. right well good for you for finding that solution that's great that's yeah okay well i think that covers my questions there and as we move on to approving these purchase recs. I make a motion we approve, approve the purchase orders as submitted. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That could be wrapping up what we have for today. Yes? Yeah. Everybody? Just a reminder, yes. the next meeting is November 9th. November 9th, yes. Yeah. And the meeting with David, do you happen to know when? 11 2 Tuesday? Uh, yeah. 10 o'clock. I believe it's 10 o'clock. Right. By Zoom, right? So yeah. We'll, yeah, see, good. we'll get you a Zoom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. include you. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. Tuesday at 11, I'm in class. Now yeah. I can't work that way. Because if there's more than one of you, I, I'm in class, class, so I won't okay. be there. I guess I'm the, lo the logical one since I'm the designated tech guy. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are the bid Adjourns. Adjourns. 530. What are the bid